Welcome back to the intro to Power Ratings series right here on Sports Betting Truth. Today is part four of the series where we talk about Pythagorean win expectation. It's a mouthful. But before I begin, I just want to say that the Excel file used in this video, as well as the macros, will be found in the description below. If you want to know how to use this file, and this is the first video of the series that you're watching, go ahead and check out video number three so you know exactly what the macros do and how to use them. With that being said, today is about Pythagorean win expectation. It's a concept that was formulated by Bill James in baseball, but it's been applied across all sports. While it's most prevalent in baseball, you have a lot of baseball websites out there that have expected win-loss. Uh, you see it on Baseball Reference, for example, on every team's page. How is that calculated? Well, today I'm going to talk about that. It's also been used in other sports though, like in basketball, it was very prevalent on Ken Palm's website for a long time where he ranked his teams one through the end by Pythagorean win expectation as well. So that's what this video is about and let's get started. So we have the file NFL two factor from video number three. I have not touched it since then, so everything should still be the same. All right, so what I did is I created a new tab called the prediction tab. And what we're going to do is calculate a projected score and margin for the Eagles and the Texans based on a five round adjustment. Okay, so I'm going to let that run. So this is the results of our five round adjustment. So what we're going to do is fill things in with our prediction tab. So I have these columns right here, adjusted points for, adjusted points allowed, league, PF difference, PA difference, cross advantage, cross plus advantage, and then finally our projected score and margin. So these columns are going to be filled by a VLOOKUP. And remember, the VLOOKUP function looks up the value we select. So in this case, it's going to be the Philadelphia Eagles C3 from the table, ADJ analysis. So just select this whole table. And do not forget the dollar signs. Very important. In front of the letters and numbers, comma. And then we're going to get their PF, so column number 7 in this tab. Remember column G, number 7. So 7, comma, and then false for the exact match. And there we go, that's the Eagles adjusted points for after five rounds of adjustments. And then we can just copy and paste that for the Texans. And then we can do the same thing, only change this back to C3 and change this number to eight for the points allowed. So the Eagles points allowed and the Texans points allowed. The five round adjusted points for and points allowed are what we're gonna use. So the league is simply the league average. So press equal and go to the league per game tab and click this right here. That is our league average. And then we can just copy and paste that. So that's the league per game average. And then these two columns are going to be how each team's points for and points allowed differentiate from the league. So it's simple, equals D3, the Eagles points for minus the league, G3. So the Eagles are slightly below average on points scored. And then the same thing for the Texans who are slightly above average. And then the same thing for points allowed, equals E3 minus G3. So the Eagles slightly above average. So the Eagles are pretty much your average team. They're not very far away. And then the Texans equals E4 minus G4. All right. And then we're going to calculate what I call the cross. Now the cross is simply each team's diametric opposites combined. So in this case, the Eagles points four plus the Texans points allowed differential. This number plus this number. So equals I3 plus J4. And then vice versa equals J3 plus I4. So the cross is how you calculate how each team differentiates from the league average combined. So the Eagles offense plus the Texans defense is about 1.17 points above the league average. And then the ADV tab, simply home and away advantages. So the Eagles will get this added to their score, the away disadvantage, if you want to call it that, and the Texans will get their home advantage, this right here, added to their score. And then this tab is simply the cross plus advantage equals L3 plus N3. Copy, paste that down. And then we add the cross plus advantage onto the league average. So equals G3 plus P3. And there we go, R3 minus R4. So we could expect the Texans to be favored by about a point at home against the Eagles with a projected score of about 25 to 24. And then I guess you could do this right here, a total column equals R3 plus R4 if you're into totals. So we could expect the Eagles being a one point dog with a total of about 49 against the Texans if they were to play in Houston. So that's how you would do that. So let's do another set of teams. Let's do the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys, Thanksgiving teams. So if the Lions played at Dallas, they would be about a 10 and a half point dog with a projected total of 51. 
How about the best team in our model? So I guess you could say the worst team would probably be the, the Redskins, and the best team was the, the Ravens. So the Redskins at the Ravens, Beltway series. The Ravens would be about a 25-point favorite at home against the Redskins. Projected score about 37 to 12, total of 49 and a half. So that's how you do that right there, but what's the one thing missing in this equation? Projected win probability, right? We have the projected score, the projected margin, but if you're playing against the money line, how would you calculate the projected win probability? Well, that's where Pythagorean win expectation comes into play and log five win percentages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to our AGJ final tab. In this column right here, we're gonna create a new one called Pyth. So the formula for Pyth is one divided by one plus parentheses PA points allowed slash divided by points for parentheses exponent. And we're going to call it X for now. So really we have to plug in three values here. The points allowed, which we have, and the points for, which we have, but then the exponent, which is something we're going to have to figure out. Now, a lot of people say that in football, the exponent should be 2.37, so that's going to be our starting point. So let's go back here and do this for the Packers. Equals 1 slash parentheses 1 plus parentheses points allowed D2 slash points for C2 parentheses caret 2.37 for our exponent parentheses. So according to this, the pyth win expectation for the Packers is about 575, and then let's do another column right here, wins and losses. So equals E2 times 16, 16 games in a season. So we could expect the Packers, according to that, to win about 9.21 games in a 16-game slate, and then the losses will simply be 16 minus F2. So about a 9-7 and seven expected record for the Packers. However, the Packers went 13-3, and three, so obviously that number might be a bit too conservative. So let's go ahead and make this look nice, and then let's go ahead and drag this down, and let's see what it looks like using that exponent of 2.37. So the Ravens, 12.5, 3.4, they went 14 and 2. The Cowboys, they went 8 and 8, and that says they should have gone about 10 and 6. But remember, the Pyth win expectation is expected wins, not what they actually did. So just because it's off from what they actually did doesn't mean it's not any good. The Redskins... 3.6, 12.3, they went 3 and 13, so that one actually sounds about right. So this is expected win percentage. So let's create two more columns, actual wins and actual losses. So I'm gonna go down the line and fill out each team what they actually did last season. Okay, so I filled in every team's actual wins and losses from last season, so I'm gonna create a new column called win percentage equals h2 slash h2 plus i2. Can't do it, but divide by 16, because remember there were some ties last year. Okay, and now this column's gonna be called diff. It's simply gonna be the differentiation between the pyth win percentage and the actual win percentage. So it equals J2 minus E2. So the Packers' actual win percentage was about 23% higher than their expected win percentage, using the exponent, again, at 2.37. We still don't know if that's our best exponent. And then we can just drag this down. And lastly, we're going to create a column called abs diff. This is simply the absolute value equals abs to get rid of the negatives. So then I'm going to create some side columns over here. This one's going to be 2.37. That's going to be our exponent. And then this one's going to be the average absolute differential. This is what we're going to use to compare. So using an exponent of 2.37, the average absolute differential between pyth and actual was about 0.077. So we're gonna adjust this right here and change the hard 2.37 to N2, and that way we can dynamically change it. Don't forget the dollar sign in front of the N and the number for this, so we can drag it without getting a circular reference. And now we can change the exponent freely. So let's just mess around and put 100, right? Whoa, that brought our absolute differential all the way up to 0.31. Now let's try 0.05. Whoa, 0.15, so obviously those are extremes, but just showing how we can change it. So what if we wanted to do a bunch of different exponents at once and then find the best one? We'll look no further, we're going to do a loop. So let's insert a button right here, go to developer, insert, and then button, and then we're gonna create a new macro. We're gonna call this one exponent find. 
and we are going to cycle through exponents to find the best one. So let's start with low exp equals, uh, let's just do one, and then high exp, let's do 10. And we are going to do do while low exp is less than or equal to high exp. So we're going to do a while loop. We're doing a while loop instead of a for loop so we can specify how we want to increment our variables here. Loop and then low exp equals low exp plus, let's do 0.01. So we're going to increment our variable by 0.01 every time to find the best exponent. And then let's create a new tab and call it exp output. So in our loop, we're going to do sheets adj final dot cells n2. So n2 will be 2. 14, 2, 14 dot value equals low exp. And then let's call exp output row equals two. And then we're gonna do sheets exp output dot cells, exp output row comma two dot value equals low exp, so our exponent. And then we can copy and paste this. Sheets exp output dot cells, and then we're gonna change this to three, so column three equals sheets adj final dot cells 314 dot value so this value right here so we're just going to create a list of all the exponents and their absolute differentiation average and then we need to add exp output row equals exp output row plus one that way we add to the next row after we print on the output sheet and there we go and then we need to assign macro to exponent find, and then we can click the button. And now it's gonna loop through all the potential exponents between one and 10, incrementing the exponent by 0.0 in each time and printing it out on the output sheet, and then we can find the best one. All right, we're done. So let's go to our output sheet. So we have, see we have it all in order right here. So let's do it in graph form, a scatter plot. Okay, so we can see, we're looking for the lowest value. So it looks like, just looking at this raw, it looks like the 2.37 might be the best. See how it looks? So let's determine what the low point is. So exp value, and let's create a filter, go to data filter, and which one is the lowest? 2.66, so not too far off from 2.37. So 2.66 is our exponent for the 2019 season. Remember, this is just for 2019. Ideally, if you're actually doing this for real, you'd want to use multiple seasons, but at least in 2019, our exponent was 2.66. So let's go ahead and plug that in, 2.66, and here we go. So which team overachieved the most? Well, it was the Packers. Their expectation was about 9 and 7, but they went 13 and 3. Which team underachieved the most? The Lions. Their expectation was about 6 and 10, and they went 3, 12, and 1. All right, make sure you get rid of that filter and everything because remember we don't want to mess with the order of the teams. We want it to be consistent across all the sheets. All right, so now that we have our exponent, 2.66, how can we use that to calculate hypothetical win percentage? So we're going to use the Pythagorean win probability we just calculated and use those to plug into the log5 win percentage formula to calculate hypothetical win percentage for these matchups. So I created two new columns here, Pyth and Log5. So Pyth is going to be easy. We're just going to take the VLOOKUP team, comma, and then we're going to go to the ADJ final tab, select the whole table, and then comma, column 5 is where our Pyth number is, false for exact match. So we have both teams Pyth right here. And then we're going to use Log5 formula. So like the Pyth equation, the Log5 formula has a top half and a bottom half. So the top half is pyth team A minus pyth team A times pyth team B. That's the top half. The bottom half is pyth team A plus pyth team B minus 2 times pyth team A times pyth team B. And that is the log five formula. I know it looks kind of complex, but let's put it into practice. So right here, let's calculate the top half. So team A is gonna be the Redskins in this case. So, so pi team A equals parentheses U3 minus U3 times U4. That's our top half. And then the bottom half, divided by parentheses U3 pi team A plus pi team four U4 
minus 2 times u3 times u4, and there we go. Translated to a win percentage, that is about 5.51%. Then obviously, we can do the inverse right here, equals u4 minus u4 times u3, top half, and then bottom half divided by u4 plus u3 minus 2 times u4 times u3. Format paint that. So about 94.5% for the Ravens, about 5.5% for the Redskins. Sounds about right. Best team versus worst team. However, that is based off of, you guessed it, a neutral field. Now, if you remember from the first video that home teams in 2019 won 51.34% of the time. So we're going to put this column right here, home ADV equals 0.5 minus 0 0.5134, 0 0.5134 minus 0 0.5, and there's our home advantages. So now we can add that onto the log 5 equals V3 plus W3 equals V4 plus W4. And there is our win percentage. So with home advantage added in, the Redskins would have about a 4.17% chance of winning at Baltimore, about 1 in 25, and the Ravens 95.83%. And that's how you use log 5 to calculate win percentage. So if you were doing money line bets, you would just convert those win percentages into a money line and compare that to the posted money line and see if you have any value. So to calculate a money line, there's two ways you do it. If it's greater than 50% or less than 50%. So equals if x3 is less than 0.5 then comma parentheses parentheses 1 minus x3 1 minus the percentage divided by percentage x3 times 100 so that's if it's less than 50 percent but if it's greater than 50 percent so if the value is false then percentage x3 divided by parentheses 1 minus x3 times parentheses minus 100. And that is our money line. Let's format this into a number. So the true money line would be about, so the true money line would be about plus 2300 minus 2300 for each side. So you'd compare that to what's actually posted. And if there's a differentiation, you'd see value and play it. So let's do another team just to see if our formula works. Let's try to do two evenly matched teams. All right, the Colts and the Chargers have a pretty similar pith. So let's do those two teams. Indianapolis Colts, Los Angeles Chargers. So you can see projected score very even, only a margin of 0.73. And then the win percentage, very even as well, 47 to 52. So there you go. So that is how you use log 5 and pith to calculate hypothetical win percentages. And you can combine that with our method to calculate the margin and score in total for two ways of predicting with only two stats. Pretty powerful stuff, right? And four videos into the series, we've only used two stats, and yet we can do all this. Well, anyway, that wraps it up for today's video on pith and log 5. So video number 5, the next video in the series, we're going to cover adding a lot more stats into our model and figuring out how to juggle all that and balance it out. So right now, so far, we've only used two stats, really three, wins and losses, and then points for and points against. So what if we wanted to add in more stats that have nothing to do with score or winning? For example, what if we wanted to add like passing yards per game or turnovers per game or like yards per play or any of these stats out there that really don't translate directly into winning or losing or points scored and points given up? How do you do that? Well, that's what the next video is going to be for. Going to be some exciting stuff, so stay tuned for that. But until next time, this is Sports Betting Truth signing off.